Okay, so we we're gonna show you guys to, uh, today how to calibrate, field calibrate your gauges. Um, you need to start off by having one gauge that has been calibrated at the factory. This DG1000 that we're gonna use as our standard gauge um, was calibrated March 4th, 2019. So we're gonna use that as the standard gauge. And then we've got this gauge that's out of calibration. It was last done um, in 2016. Um, we're going to see if it's still within out within its specifications. Um, we've got 30 feet of hose. We got some tubing that we can connect um, to both the gauges, and we also have a syringe. It's kind of the equipment that that we need to have, and we've got a form to document um, our readings on. Um, so I'm going to just connect our our hoses and. For our standard gauge, we want to be on channel A, the reference port, on the gauge that we're field calibrating or testing, we want to be on reference A and reference B. And all the and these hoses all connect into the single 30-foot hose that's going to be run into the syringe. Um, once you get those gauges hooked up, you want to have the syringe pushed in all the way. And when you hook it up to the hose, I mean, it should show a little bit of a negative pressure on the channel A of your standard gauge. And so now we're, we we want to check. Um, there's four different points of pressure we want to check our gauge at: a positive 500 pascals of pressure, a positive 50 pascals of pressure, a negative 50 pascals of pressure, and a pop and a negative 500 pascals of pressure. And those are the four points um, that you check to determine if if your gauge is within calibration. And so the first the first check this this positive 500 pascals of pressure. Um, we should be within five pascals of the reading on channel A of our standard gauge, and the readings on channel A and B of the gauge that we're uh, field field calibrating. So. Let me go ahead and put this under under pressure, and then once I get it up to 500 pascals of pressure, and that's with, and you can have plus or minus 30 pascals when you're when you're doing this. Um, but once we get up to that pressure, I'm going to set my time average from one second to 10 second 10 seconds on our gauge gauges, and get them. Um, zeroing out in sync with each other. And also you want to note, like with the syringe and stuff on here, you will have a little bit of leakage. So your numbers are going to start to drop a little bit. Um, so you just kind of got to take your readings when they when the gauge zero out at the same time. So I'm going to first change this one to 10, 10 seconds. And it kind of counts on the gauge for me right there. So when it, when it gets ready to, or when it gets close to 10 seconds, I'll um, click the time average on this one. Okay, so they're, they should be zeroing out roughly around the same time. We're at 500 pascals of pressure. We got 487, 738, 486. Okay, so we were only one Pascal difference between um, channel A on our standard gauge and channel B on this gauge, but we're way off on channel A were way more than the five pascals allowed. So right now, I mean just off of that test, it fails, but we'll check check at our other pressures too. So I'm gonna pull pull out the syringe, let the pressure out of the hose. Um, I'm gonna leave this gauge on the 10 second time average. Or actually I'll change them change them both back to 
to one second. It's easier to have it on the one second time average to get to your the pressure that you need to have it at. And then once you're at the pressure, you can change the time average so it'll hold the pressure reading long enough for you to write it down. Um, so our next pressure that we want to check is a positive 50 pascals and we should be within 0.5 pascals of pressure to our standard gauge. Our, our calibration gauge or the gauge that we're calibrating should be within 0.5 pascals of pressure. Alright, so I'm going to connect the, the syringe now to the hose and again I got it all the way up to the front. Um, we're, again, we've got a negative pressure on our gauge, so we're looking for a positive 50 pascals, plus or minus 5 pascals. So it's not going to take very much to get up to... Okay, so now I'm going to set the time average again. Um, I'm going to go for 10 seconds, just so I'll hold a reading long enough to read um, all three pressures at the same time. And I'll give it a sec just to go through one more 10 second cycle. Alright, so we're at 50 pascals here, 50.9, 76.5, and 50.9 over here. So again, this gauge is way off on channel A of this gauge. I'm, I'm not, I wouldn't even go farther as to test the other two pressures. Um, between testing at the 500 pascals and the 50, we can tell this gauge um, needs to go back to the factory to be recalibrated. Um, so I'll just, I would just end the test on this one right there. Now I've got a DG1000. I'm still using that standard uh, 1000 that was calibrated at the factory just earlier this month. Um, we've got one that's just barely on March 7th. Um, it expired its two-year calibration, factory calibration. So we're going to do a field calibration on it. Um, and again, we want to hook up the same, same way as before. Reference on channel A, reference on channel A and B on the gauge that we're field calibrating. Okay, and again, I've got it on a one second time average for right now um, until I get up to the 500 pascals of pressure. And then I'll change it to the 10 second time average. So, All right, so now we've got it up to 527. I'm gonna drop my time average on on both of these and click 10 seconds at the same time. That should that should kind of align the time that they're zeroing out. So this one, I didn't have it on pressure, pressure. So I've gotta go into here, click on pressure. Now we're on pressure, pressure. Okay, I'm gonna let this, let them both click here another time. Okay, so I have 490, 493, 492. So they're all within within three pascals of pressure on that test. Um, so it passes it passes that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and document that on our on our uh, form so we can keep track of what what they were. So we had a three pascals of difference on channel A 
and a 2 pascals difference on channel B. There's that, there's that form. You have the serial number, the date, the technician, and then the pressure readings that we're getting. And we're within 5 pascals of pressure. So it passes there, but now we're going to check our 50 pascal uh, measurement that they want us to take. I'm going to change this back to just this, uh, our standard gauge. I'm just going to change it back to a one second time average so I can have a more accurate reading of where I'm at on pressure. So again, got the syringe pushed in all the way. And don't take too much to get up to 50. And again, it's 50 plus or minus 5 pascals, so between 55 and 45. All right, I kind of hit the time average again at the same time on those, so they should be in sync. So we got 49.6, 49.7, and 49.7. So there's only only a 0.1 difference from channel from the standard gauge to channel A and channel B. And we're allowed a 0.5, let me put this over here, we're allowed a, a 0.5 difference. And so the gauge passes that, that test. Okay, now we're gonna, um, now we're gonna be doing a negative pressure check on it. So instead of having the syringe pushed in, you want to have this syringe out. Because before we were creating a vacuum on it. And now we're going to go back up to, to negative 500 pascals. Plus or minus 30, so. I kind of like to go to the top range of that just just because as it starts to drop gives me time to work work with it so again I'm gonna go put us on a 10 second time average All right, we're 504.3, 505, and 505. Okay, so we're only one Pascal difference on both channel A and B from our from our standard gauge, and then and we're allowed a five Pascal difference. So it passes that one. I'm going to change this back to a one second time average so I can, so I can see a real time of where my gauge is at. We're looking for negative 50 plus or minus 5 pascals. And the slightest, the slightest movement on this thing will make a drastic difference. So I'm going to go back to a 10 second time average. And this one again, we're looking for, it needs to be within 0.5 pascals of pressure. So we got 52.8, 53, and 53. So we've got a, 
we've got a 0.2, a 0.2 Pascal difference between our standard gauge and channel A and channel B. And so we're within that 0.5 Pascals of difference. All right, so now that I've calibrated this gauge and verified that it is within calibration of the factory, you want to make some kind of a label that just has, shows that it was field calibrated and the date that it was field calibrated. And you want to, because that's going to determine, like a factory calibration is good for 24 months, where a field calibration is only good for six months. So you need to remember that when you do field calibrate, you've got to do it more often. So that could look something like, like that. And then I've got the, the backup documentation to show who did it and that that gauge actually was field calibrated. Thank you.